Hello again, Doc Rombio here to talk about a very important lab technique uh, known as the PCR, uh, polymerase chain reaction. From an AP Bio standpoint, it involves many concepts from many of the big ideas. So it, for me, in my, my opinion, it, it brings together a lot of essential ideas. So it serves as a nice review. We're gonna remind you basically of what a PCR is and what goes into this reaction, but also this should serve as a review for some of the ideas, especially in Big Idea 3, about what DNA can do. Okay, so PCR is essentially uh, a chain of reactions. So it's a chain of reactions that makes more DNA. So you take a template of DNA and add some DNA polymerase as, as well as some other reactants. And essentially what it's going to do is make more copies of a specific sequence of DNA. So let's say this is your target sequence we can amplify that sequence literally into the millions, uh, into the billions even, uh, using the PCR reaction. So uh, in vitro, which basically means in a tube, you are recapitulating what happens in vivo in the cell during S phase of interphase. So the cell basically takes DNA and replicates it in S phase of interphase, and scientists have been smart enough to basically put all those reactants together in a tube and let those reactants go to work and copy uh, DNA. So let's go over this topic and I will mention the previous concepts that will be important for you as well as remind you of what a PCR is. Okay, so for starters, you'll need a buffer for the reaction to occur in. Uh, and essentially the, the, the buffer for, the, for this reaction is oftentimes 8.4, which is not an important fact. But I do wanna remind you that it is important to understand the relationship between pH and protein structure and function. So proteins have an optimal uh, pH range uh, and straying too far from the pH can lead to protein uh, shape changes, possibly denaturation. And, um, and if you do that, you lose key structures for enzymes uh, in this reaction, we're going to use uh, DNA polymerase, which is an enzyme. So we need to keep that pH in the proper range for DNA polymerase to do its job. Otherwise, you'll lose the active site and potentially lose its function. So the first thing you add for a PCR reaction is buffer. You will also need a sample containing the DNA sequence of your choice, right? So if you want to amplify a gene or if you're doing something else for a, a, a project, you need a DNA template for amplification. Uh, this is similar to the separation of strands in the parent molecule during DNA replication in vivo. So you're going to start with one, strand, one molecule of DNA. That molecule of DNA can be separated into two strands and from there on you can make uh, many, many additional daughter strands. So we add DNA as a, as a template here. The DNA template really connects us back to big idea three, uh, especially DNA structure and function. So what is a DNA molecule made up of? What are nucleotides? If you head back to big idea three, you'll remind yourself what DNA is all about. So head back to big idea three to get a, get a good review in. We're gonna proceed to the next thing that you need for a PCR reaction. Uh, which is primers. So primers are also called oligonucleotides. So it's essentially a chain of many nucleotides, usually between 18 and 22 nucleotides long. And it's a fragment of DNA uh, that you use to start the DNA replication process. And what's really convenient is that there are companies out there that make these uh, primers for you. So it's not something you would have to do in the lab, but it's an important first step Again, this connects back to big idea three. How does DNA structure lead to its function? And also uh, DNA replication. So how does DNA replication occur inside the nucleus during interphase? Well, you may recall that DNA replication uh, requires primers be laid down for DNA polymerase to start the rep replication reaction. So DNA polymerase cannot replicate all its own. It needs a starting amount of DNA to do that. In vivo, in the cell, primase, an enzyme comes in and lays down RNA primers. 
Okay, so in the cell, it's actually RNA primers, and those primers go on and get removed later on. Inside uh, our reaction tube here in vitro, the DNA, uh, the primers are going to be DNA, and again, those are ordered um, from a company. So the second connection I want to make here, uh, I want you to understand that the primers are complementary in nature. So what I've drawn over here for you in red is a primer that's going to complement our, our uh, sequence we want to amplify here in black. So to start this reaction, primers need to be added to the mixture and they need to be complementary so that they can uh, hydrogen bond to the DNA that's already there to serve as somewhat of a landing pad for our molecule of um, DNA polymerase to come and start the process, okay? Lastly, I want you to know that replication essentially for the growing molecule proceeds in the five prime to three prime direction. So we're gonna reinforce this over the next couple slides, but you can essentially only add here to three prime N, okay? Which means you're reading your template in a three prime to five prime manner. So DNA is an anti-parallel molecule. That's an essential AP biology concept that we'll cover here um, over and over again for the last couple of slides. But head back to big idea three if you wanna review that. Okay, the third thing that you need to add in a polymerase chain reaction are DNA nucleotides. So nucleotides are important. Here you may recall them for uh, DNA, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. We take those, we add them to our mixture. Uh, essentially this is uh, the, these are the molecules that will create the growing strand based on co reverse complementation on the template, okay? So again, a lot of connections to Big Idea 3 again, but we're also making connections to Big Idea 4. Essentially, Big Idea 4 starts off by saying, in biology, there are a lot of monomers that come together to make polymers, and those polymers have a certain biological function. I want you to think of polysaccharides. I want you to think of nucleic acids in this case. Also think of proteins. So in this case, for nucleic acids, for DNA, uh, it's a polymer made up of monomers of nucleotides, okay? You can go back to big idea three and remember you know, the components of a nucleotide, but basically what we're supplying to this reaction is a nucleotide of guanine, nucleotide of thymine, nucleotides, uh, additional nucleotides, okay? So this is a really important step. You need these nucleotide monomers to create the replicated strand to keep this PCR going. And you also need those in vivo in the cell to replicate your DNA at interphase. Okay, next, uh, you will need a enzyme that actually does the replication process. So you may recall from your studies of DNA replication, DNA polymerase is the molecule that does this in the cell. So we're gonna add some DNA polymerase. The specific DNA polymerase that we're adding is usually called TAC, okay? So uh, basically this is a molecule that was collected from an organism, a bacterium that lives in a hot spring. So there's a lot of evolution connections here. So again, we're gonna connect this to big idea, uh, I should say big idea one, uh, so Big Idea 3 and Big Idea 1, um, we've heard about Big Idea 3, DNA structure, but now let's consider evolution and natural selection, okay? So TAC uh, is named after the, the molecule that, or the organism that it was collected from, so-called Thermus aquaticus, okay? So if you're looking for an evolution connection, these bacteria uh, thermophilic bacteria live in hot springs where the temperatures get up uh, past 100. And really, you know, you have to consider this in nature. Um, a lot of organisms can't do that. So a real connection here is that this bacterium can withstand high temperatures 
uh, it has evolved the ability to withstand these high temperatures. So its enzymes, all the proteins, including TAC, are heat stable at high temperatures. Okay, this is important for PCR because in PCR you have to cycle through rounds of high temperature to break the bonds of your uh, DNA molecule. So if we didn't have a heat stable polymerase, we wouldn't be able to do this reaction because proteins denature in high temperatures. That's another big connection. If you uh, basically raise the temperature too high, the proteins will denature and they won't be able to uh, perform their function. So this is a really unique relationship between a enzyme taken from a bacterium that has adapted to living in hot springs and we're using it for our PCR reaction. So there's a really neat evolution connection. I want to remind you also over here again that because DNA is anti-parallel, uh, this polymerase shown in green is going to read the template in the three prime to five prime direction, but it's going to create a new daughter strand in the five prime to three prime direction. The reason for that is you can only add nucleotides. So if I take this guanine here, this is gonna be the next nucleotide that I add to my growing daughter strand. I can only add on the three prime end. So now I have a new three prime end right here. So I could take this thymine reverse complement it to this adenine here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm proceeding in this direction. Polymerase can only proceed and add in that direction. Okay, so there's a lot of connections being made here. If you need a more uh, descriptive diagram, there's one here. And essentially if we're looking at this new strand on this side over here, uh, you can only add to the three prime end of this growing strand proceeding in this direction due to the hydroxyl group here on this sugar being available for that bond, okay? Again, they're going to reverse complement. So for this A here in our template strand, it's gonna bond here to this T. This sugar is gonna shift up here. This phosphate will shift up here and it'll continue to create this backbone of our newly growing daughter strand, okay? so. Uh, polymerase can only add nucleotides on the three prime end of the growing strand, okay? That is an essential concept. If you, if you can understand that, you really understand a lot about the DNA molecule and about uh, replication, transcription. Okay, so we're as essentially done with adding the reactants that we need for a PCR reaction. Uh, we have our buffer. We have some template, we have some primers, we have some nucleotides, and we have the enzyme that's gonna make it all happen. What happens now is you take the entire tube with all of your contents in it, and you put it into a PCR machine, okay? Every molecular biology lab will have one, two, or three, even more PCR machines. And you're going to load those tubes into the machine here. So we have our tubes in. We're going to set up a program that will run in the PCR machine for about 30 cycles. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details of how a PCR cycle works. That's a, a subject for another video, but essentially it cycles through um, high and low temperatures so that you can replicate your template strand of DNA. All right, let's make some connections here. Let's sum everything up. So really big idea one here is all about evolution. The real connection to PCR is the heat stable RNA polymerase we use. We call that TAC because it's harvested or collected from Thermus aquaticus, a, uh, a thermophilic bacterium. So it's a bacterium that can live in high heat. Okay. Um, the enzyme, the heat stable TAC, represents an adaptation of this organism to high temperatures that, that it lives in. Okay. So big idea one, good connection to evolution there. Uh, we can also relate this back to basic protein chemistry. Uh, most proteins would have denatured in the hot spring temperatures uh, as the bonds that hold their structure together would be lost. This is not the case for TAC as it evolved in Thermus aquaticus, an organism that lives in hot springs. Big idea two. Uh, big idea two is all about energy. So at first glance, when putting this together, I thought, well, how are we going to really connect this to 
you know, the energy big idea unit, aside from saying that all these reactions require energy, uh, which they do. Um, but essentially what I want you to relate this back to is the idea that, um, you know, inside the cell, cells are constantly becoming more disorganized, more chaotic. It's a concept that we refer to as entropy. So without the DNA inside each cell's nucleus or inside of a bacterium, you wouldn't have the ability to produce proteins which reduce the amount of entropy the organism is going through. So in other words, a, 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 pro, a cell would very quickly fall apart and succumb to entropy. But because you have DNA there that makes proteins that keeps the cell organized and decreases its entropy, you're able to maintain homeostasis and keep the organisms alive. So there's your connection for Big Idea 2. Uh, Big Idea 3 was the one that I referred to the most in this video. So Big Idea 3 is about storing and transmitting biological information. So this is the primary idea for PCR because DNA is how organisms store genetic information. Um, I'd like for you to take a look through Big Idea 3 here because there are a lot of linking concepts here. Just a quick run through of some of them. I have my curriculum guide in front of me. So DNA is the primary source of heredible, uh, her hereditary information uh, and is transmitted from one generation to the next. You should really understand that. You should really understand DNA replication as the uh, basic way a cell ensures continuity of hereditary information. You should understand that DNA is composed of nucleotides, which are in turn composed of a sugar, a phosphate, and one of four nitrogenous bases, um, and that these bases exhibit complementary base pairing such that A pairs with T, T pairs with A, C pairs with G, and G pairs with C. Okay. We also described in this video, and it, one of the concepts that's required for Big Idea 3 is the anti-parallel nature of the DNA molecule and how this impacts DNA replication. Lastly, uh, one of the most important lab techniques uh, you'll run into if you, if you go on to practice science, uh, molecular biology, is the PCR, polymerase chain reaction. It's essential because you need to amplify DNA in the lab for various uh, projects and, and applications. Okay. Lastly, big idea four. Big idea four, uh, we revisit some of the biochemistry surrounding monomers and polymers. So in this case, the monomer that I want to, I want to bring your attention to is the is the nucleotide, and the polymer coming together in this case is the nucleic acid nucleic acid deoxyribonucleic acid. So this is the way that um, organisms store genetic information. It's basically modular in nature. It's nucleotide after nucleotide after nucleotide. And that's passed down from generation to generation. So there you have it. Uh, PCR is a really important technique, valuable in the lab, valuable for the AP bio test. Uh, so as you head off to, to college next year, if you're going to become a biologist or if you're heading off to medical school, chances are you will do PCR in the lab. Um, often. Okay, so we're basically duplicating DNA in this technique. Um, I hope this helps. I hope this prepares you for the AP bio test. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.